All right, in this video, we're going to look at how to get every single image out of a folder. We can actually display that in a gallery on our custom live wallpaper. Right now I have, what is this, 5, 10, 14 images in a folder. I'm pulling all of them using Tasker. And then we can come in here and tap on any of these images and we can change a wallpaper or thumbnail or what have you. Now let me show you something else too. Here's that folder on my device. I actually had this on my SD card. Here's those same 14 images. I can come in here and remove some of these images. Just gonna move these two out of here. So I've moved them into this folder, but again, this demo folder here, this is where Tasker's reading those files, those images. Notice we have 12 now. Heading back to the home screen, if I press this refresh button, you're gonna see some stuff fly up here on the screen. And then you saw this image change, but if we open this gallery back up here, you can see that we now have 12 images and we can change these as well. And we can close that gallery out. And again, this can be a wallpaper thumbnail or whatever. Now, before diving into this, the way I have it currently set up, it's gonna show 25 images max. You can quickly add additional rows of thumbnails. Depending on how comfortable you are with coding, I mean, heck, you could have as many images as you want in a folder. Tasker can read all of them and you can display all of them. But again, the way it's currently set up, I have it to display at most 25 images. Now, something else to mention too, before jumping into Tasker, I did get a request to do this, both a manual approach like this here, and then the user also wanted these images to change randomly and automatically. Now I tried to use the TU random image function inside of KOWP. However, when I updated the files or updated the images in that folder like I just showed you, sometimes those would not refresh in KOWP unless we restarted our device or cleared the cache or something like that. So I resorted to a pure tasker form. And again, we're only using custom to actually display the stuff on our wallpaper. And speaking of tasker, here is this project images in folder. You can find this in my tasker files. There's just one task, list images. There's no profiles, no scenes, no variables. So everything is built inside of this task. Jumping into this task, not really too long. The first thing we're doing, this first action, again, to do any of these actions that you see here, list files, variable set, flash, etc. Just come down here to plus. If we want to list files, type in list and there's our list files. So that's how we get those actions. So jumping into this list files here, you want to get the path to that particular folder. Click on this magnifying glass. And here is that path here, that gallery demo folder I showed you earlier. You can navigate back and forth between your internal and external storage right here. Once you find that path, let's apply that. And then I have these images sorted alphabetically. You can change that there. And what we want to do with this list of files is we want to store it as a variable. Now I'm using just a local variable. I didn't capitalize any of these letters. So percent images is going to be a list of files and these file names are going to be separated with commas. Kind of like an array or a list of things. So once we've established this, let's go look at this second action, variable set. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to create a new variable, image underscore count, whatever you wanna call it. And we're gonna look at that variable, that list of images, that list of files. And if we put parentheses and put a pound symbol inside of it, this is going to return the number of images, the number of files that we have in that folder. Again, this images here is what we created back in the first action. Remember percent images. By us putting this here after it, parentheses, pound, parentheses, this is going to be a number. It's gonna be the number of files. So we're gonna call that the image count. Heading into this third one here, this is just a test. We can actually cut this off. But if you recall, I did have something flashing on the screen earlier. It said I refreshed the list. It told me how many images I had. And then it actually returned the entire list. Percent images with just parentheses. That will return that entire list of files with each file being separated with a comma. So again, we don't really need that one. You can cut that off. But what we do wanna go ahead and do now is we want to send over a variable to KOWP or KWGT or whatever custom app you're using. So I'm doing a KOWP send variable. Make sure you change this if you're using KWGT or something like that. But let's jump into here. Let's look at the configuration. And what I'm doing is I'm sending over that count, percent image underscore count. We just saw that a moment ago. For the custom variable name, I'm gonna call it count. And this is going to be a number again. I'll show you what this is used for right here shortly. Checking on that. Let's look at the fifth action now. Variable set, percent image underscore num, let's set this to one. What are we doing here? Jumping into this action. 
So again, we have another variable here. We're setting it to one and we want to click on do maths. Basically, every time we refresh this, I'm going to start our image underscore num. It's going to be a one. And then what we're going to do with this, if we back out of here, we have this for loop. Now, here's what this for loop is going to do. It's going to look inside of that images array, that list of file names. And for each one of these, we're going to call it percent image. Now, what are we going to do with this percent image? Let's back out of here. We're going to send that over to KOWP, KOWP send variable. And if we go to the configuration, it's going to take that image. We're going to send it over to KOWP and we're going to call it image and then whatever percent image underscore num is. Now, if that doesn't quite make sense, hang tight. I'm going to explain that a little bit more in detail. But if we back out of here and then we come back to our actions, we have a variable add. And we're going to add one, we're going to add one to image underscore num. So here's what's really going on. For every single item in this images array, for the first item, we're going to call it percent image, but we're actually going to send it over to custom and we're going to call it image one. Then we're going to add one to that value. And when we add one to image underscore num, it's going to become a two. It's going to go back to this for loop and it's going to look at the second one because what it's doing for every single item in this list. Remember, images with the parentheses, it's going to be a list of files separated by a comma. That second image, we're going to call it percent image. But when we send it over to custom, it will be image two. Then we add one to this. We go back around and for every single one of these, every image, every file in that folder, we're going to call it percent image. But when we send it over to custom, it's going to have its own little number. Image one, image two, image three, image four. And this changes because we're adding one inside of this for loop. By us doing this, each one of those images will have an image one, image two, image three. We can access those directly in custom. And that's actually how I'm creating those thumbnails that you saw in that gallery that I popped up. Once we've looked through every single item in this list, we end that for loop and our task is done. Now, if you had three or 400 images or something crazy in a folder, this probably may take a little while, but for me, it's pretty much instant, only a second or two to actually calculate or run this task. And that's it for Tasker. Make sure you assign your little icon here. That way you can use that task shortcut inside of KOWP. Checking on that. So now let's dive into custom. This is a component. It is called the Tasker folder image gallery. You can find this in my free components folder. Diving into that component. If we go over to globals, nothing too crazy. You don't really need this one here, but I just decided to go ahead and create a variable in custom for the tasker count. So broadcast tasker comma count. This is that variable that we saw back in tasker is sending it over to custom and we do have 12 images in that folder right now. Again, you don't have to create a variable for this, but I did it anyway. Now show gallery on and off. That's how we can cut the gallery on and off. That's just triggering this button here. Now tap is important. This is just a text global variable and you can actually give it a value of one. But basically what we want to do here is when we tap on this to open our gallery, this tap is going to become a one. This will be a two. This will be a three. And notice if I come in here to tap now, it did change it to a three. And this is based off the indexes and the rows of images. So one, two, three, four, five. Then we go up to 10, 11, 12. Watch this. If I tap this one, that's going to be number 12. If we go back to here, notice it did change to 12. That's based off of the SI module index, looking at how many items we have and also how many rows we have. That's it for our globals. Let's jump over to the items. This overlap group selected image is just a square. But again, this is how you can apply it to your wallpaper or whatever. If I go over to the FX, we do have it set to bitmap. And if we look at the code here, remember back in Tasker how we had an image one, image two, image three? Well, remember GV tap, it's going to return a number. So this can be image one, image two, image three, image four, and it's going to be whatever image you tap on. That's how we apply that image to our wallpaper, our thumbnail, or whatever you want to create. And what I'm referring to here is this square that we had the blue water applied to. Now, if I come in here and change this, tap it on something else, it will change it here. If we jump into here, it's the same code, but now it's going to be image two because I tapped on the second one and it's looking at that stuff sent over from Tasker, image one, image two, etc., And it's displaying that image from that folder. Let's jump back to the component. 
Let's come to the actual stack group, the folder gallery, and we have one, two, three, four, and then we have a fifth row. But right now we only see three rows. Well, I have a visibility code for each one of these. And to simplify this, I'm gonna come in here and delete everything except for the first row. If I jump into this stack group, horizontally centered, if I go to the layer, look at the code, GV count, that's the number of images in that folder. If this is less than five times the module index plus one, we want to remove this row. The only time this is gonna get removed is if you had zero images in that folder. That's just the first row though. Second row might not be there, or the third row, depending on how many images you have. But this same code is going to be applied to all of these rows. The reason why I'm taking five times the module index, because I have five images per row. If you had six images, you'd want to do six times the module index. But I'm also coming back in here and adding one, because SI module index, the first value is actually zero, yet I'm calling my images image one, image two, image three, and the count will be one, two, three, etc. We're not starting with zero for our indexes in our images. Checking on that. Let's go back to the items. We have overlap groups for all of these and they're all the same. I tell you what I'll do. I'll come in here and delete all but one. Here's that overlap group. We have a layer visibility code applied to this. This is how we can get things to center up if we don't have enough images to fill up an entire row. Check this out. Very similar code, but a little bit different. Still talking about GV count. Five is the number of images in a row times the module index of its parent plus the module index of this actual overlap group that this image sits inside of. So this module index right here is the overlap group. This module index comma one is the parent of the overlap group, which is the stack group. So again, the code's slightly different here. We have to do a little bit more math, but this is all about centering our images up. If we don't have enough images to fill up a row, those images will stay centered. Maybe you did notice that when I had 12 images shown a while ago, you had five on the first row, five on the second row, but two on that third one and it was centered up nicely. Let's check on that. If we touch this overlap group, this is how we can toggle that tap. One, two, three, four, or how many ever images we have. So if I go to toggle global switch tap, check out the code I'm applying here. This is that same code we were looking at a moment ago for the layer visibility. The module index of the parent, this is the stack group that creates the row. The module index itself here is the actual overlap group. Same type of math going on. And again, don't forget to add one, just like I've done with all these other codes that have utilized the module index. Checking on that, almost done here. Let's look inside of this overlap group and we're gonna have that square. If we go to the FX for the square, looking at the code, here is that same code yet again. So this is how we're getting image and then whatever image it is based on the rows and the number of images we have. So this can be image one, image two, image three, image four. Again, utilizing that SI module index, we're looking at the parent's parent. The reason why this is the parent's parent because we're now in the square. The parent to the square is the overlap group. The parent to the overlap group is the stack group. So this is actually looking at the index of the stack group. Then it's looking at the index of the overlap group, taking five times the index of the stack group plus the index of the overlap group. And again, we're adding one. This is how we're gonna get image one, image two, image three, et cetera. It's getting that file path name and we're displaying these individual thumbnails. And once you've applied all these codes, I don't think I missed anything here. Let's back out of here. Let's go to this overlap group. Let's copy and paste this five times. And notice every time I did it, a new one pops up. The same codes are getting applied. I don't have to change any codes here because I'm using that module index the way it should be used. Using the parent, the parent's parent, etc. So we have that first row. There's the stack group. If we copy and paste this, I'm gonna do two, three, four, five. And you notice here, none of these other ones showed up and that's because we don't have enough images. If I come down here to this fifth row, if I go to its layer visibility, you'll notice it's set to remove. And the reason why I set to remove is because GV count is less than five times the module index plus one. Basically, we don't have enough images in that folder to show that fifth row or heck, even that fourth row. Check on this. Let's go to this fourth row here. If we look at its layer visibility, it's also set to remove. 
But if I come back to the third row, one, two, three, that's this row right here. Notice it is centered up. These images are centered. Go to layer visibility. It is set to always show. Again, the same code. Just a little bit more to finish things up. If our folder is empty, if we removed all the image from the folder, I do have something set to pop up that says no images are in the folder. Something else to mention too, this background, this big thumbnail we see here, I do have a layer of visibility set to there. If GV count is less than one, basically if it's equal to zero, we want to remove that image because this means we don't have any images in that folder. If GV counts less than one, we're talking about zero. You could have said equal zero here, but I don't know. I was thinking crazy this day when I made it. So again, this is there to remove the thumbnail. And also ultimately what's going to happen too is that we're going to show this group. Now, right now we don't see this text because it's set to remove. But if GV count is less than one, that's when we do want to show this message. Hey, there are no images in that folder. I'll show that to you right here in a second. A little bit more, we have our buttons, little stack group down here. The refresh, just a font icon. Go over to its touch. We're launching a shortcut. That's that task I showed you over in Tasker. And again, to access that, you'll do the task shortcut right there. And then we're doing one more thing as well. We're setting GV tap. We're gonna set that automatically back to one. Basically, when you press this, it's going to reset it to this first image. So really doing two things there, this refresh button. And then if we back out one more time, coming down to the close icon, this X, if we touch it, we're toggling that global switch, show gal, show the gallery. And I guess one more thing I should show you too, how are we getting that gallery to go away? If I go to the stack group with all of this junk inside of it, go to its layer, go to the code. If GV show gal, if you don't have anything after that, that's assuming that show gal is on. So if GV show gal, this means if GV show gal is on, we always want to show it. If show gal is not on, we want to remove it. And I think that's it. And before I let you go, let's just go in here and see what happens if we remove all of these images from the folder. I'm gonna save this. Jumping into my file explorer, I'm going to select all of these, I'm gonna move them, and I'm just gonna throw them in this folder. So now we have all these images out of the demo folder. Back at the home screen, if I refresh this, check it out, no images are in the folder. <laughs> now I'm glad I did this because I actually need to fix these buttons so they're not blocking the text. I'll fix that and you can see that in the free components folder. And then one more thing for testing purposes, I'm gonna take all 27 of these images, I'm gonna move them, and I'm gonna dump them inside of that folder that Tasker's looking at. We have 27 images in here, but since I only copied over five rows with five images per row, when I refresh this, you're gonna see that we have 25 out of those 27. But you could easily come in here and copy another row, or again, depending on how good you are with your coding in KOWP or your custom app, you can actually create pages of these thumbnails so you could cycle through the pages. But hopefully this will get you headed in the right direction of pretty much looking at all of the images you have in a folder, using Tasker to display those thumbnails, and then we can quickly come in here and tap on these thumbnails to change our wallpaper or whatever we want. If you like what you see and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.